So we're going to start with social media. We hear so much about it, but how do we properly use it? What are some best practices that clubs can utilize to make it very effective for their marketing efforts? Before we get into what you want to do, the tactics, the ideas, the strategies, let's talk about why to use it in the first place. It's good for a few reasons. You can reach different audiences. First, it's good for keeping past members engaged. I know this from my own club, MI Toastmasters and Yonkers. While we have some members who they're former members now, they are still engaged with our Facebook page, which is really great to see when they like, when they comment. So it's good to keep them engaged with us. Facebook, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, Instagram, good for giving current members some shine, as I like to call it, or to showcase your members. So any testimonials that they may have, a, a picture of them from your virtual meeting, anything like that really makes people excited if they're comfortable being on social media, of course. And Social media is good for letting potential members get a feel for your club. So there may be some people who they're resistant to using social media. But the thing is, besides visiting a club's website, people are going to check to see if you are on these social media channels. It does happen. I know I do that. If I go to visit a club's website, if I'm just interested in visiting their virtual meeting. I also do go to their Facebook page or if they have an Instagram page, I will check that as well. Unlike the website, unless you have a lot of current photos on there and clubs are not always updating your websites, a lot of clubs will try to keep their social media pages updated at least. I can visit those pages. I can get an idea of who's in the club. Are they active, first of all? Social media is going to tell you that. So that's another reason you do want to keep your pages up to date. But it lets people get a feel for the culture of your club in a way. Does this look like a fun group? Are they laughing in the photos? So that's another reason that I do urge clubs to get on social media if they are not yet. People do check your pages out because they want to see what kind of club this is from what they can tell from the photos. So let's talk about best practices for social media. First, designate the best member in your club to handle this account. It is normally the VPPR, but it may not be. If that person is not comfortable handling anything related to social media, have another officer or someone who's a member, but they're not an officer, but they're really good with keeping pages up to date. They're comfortable with social media. They're going to constantly keep your pages updated. Find out who that person is and let them just run with it. Of course, the president, the other officers, you guys will make sure that every the rules are being followed. Nothing crazy is being put up there. Um, but we trust our members anyway, don't we? So find out who the best person is. Post regularly. I see too many Facebook pages, and I'm talking about from our district, where some have not been updated since 2018. Some have not been updated since 2020. Honestly, even going a month without updating is a long time. So we really want to make sure that we are committed with posting on a regular schedule. So what's a regular schedule? Well, when I did some research, there are a lot of different answers out there depending on the social media channel. But depending on what you're using, I would say Facebook, for example, at least once a day. Instagram, they say three to five times a week. But most clubs, if they're on social media, they have Facebook, try posting at least once a day. If you can't, I would say at least a couple times a week. I know my club does not always do once a day, but a couple times a week, especially after you have a meeting, try to put a group photo up if you can, and something like that. No matter what you decide to do, the frequency of it, you always want to think about the quality over the quantity. We don't want to just throw something up there. We want to throw something up there that 
it's connected to our club somehow. It can help promote our club. It can show our members off a little bit, all that good stuff. So think about the content that you're putting there, which leads me to my next point about varying up the content. I've also seen Facebook pages of clubs where the only thing that they are posting are, we have this meeting coming up. Uh, register to attend our meeting, register to attend our meeting, register to attend our meeting. That's the only thing that's on their page. That's great. I'm glad that they are letting people know that they do have a meeting come up to get people to register, but you don't want to have the same thing constantly up there. Images and videos, those types of posts do very well over posts that are just text alone. The good thing is I think most clubs are getting hip to that now because most posts that I see, they do at least have an image attached to it, which is really good. Video is just taking over in a big way right now. Facebook and Instagram, they love videos. They love reels. Reels are just shorter versions of videos, 30 seconds. They will blast those out quicker than a post that just has a photo typically. Photos and videos are also good as far as retention with helping people remember what your content is. There is research out there that says that posts that don't have any images, people are only going to retain the information at a rate of 10% a few days later versus 65% they will remember that information if it had an image attached to it. So it's not just about the image looking pretty looking catchy. There is some research out there connecting it to memory as well. And we want people to remember our information, right? Our posts, because we want them to join. We want them to visit at least. As far as your post formatting, try to keep it short. I think we know that attention spans are short, so no one's really trying to read a whole story. If you can keep it to, you know, three, three sentences or so, then do that. Sometimes there are exceptions, but you just don't want to make it a long diary entry. Hashtags are very important for visibility. So if you're not familiar, that's, we would call that the tic-tac-toe symbol back in the day, and then you'd have a word after it. That's a hashtag. So using that on Facebook, using that on Instagram, especially Instagram, you have to, you need to use hashtags or your post is really not going to be shown to anybody. But on these two platforms, Using hashtags with your posts are going to help them get shown to a wider audience. It'll help it get distributed more. People will also look for certain hashtags. Like if someone is interested in visiting a Toastmasters club, let's say a New York Toastmasters club, they might go on Instagram and type in New York Toastmasters or hashtag NYC Toastmasters to see what comes up. So you definitely want to make it a habit to use hashtags. Definitely on Instagram, it is a good practice on Facebook. When you post on Facebook and Instagram also, tag your other members who are following your pages. Tag family members. Tag your friends to the post. You never know who may be interested in visiting your club if you tag them to it. And even if your post is not so much about, hey, our next meeting is next week, maybe you put up a really good public speaking tip that could help people. Tag people to that. For your members who are following the page, guess what? Just because they're following it, they won't always get to see that post. That's just how it is. We don't ever want to assume that because someone is following our page that they will necessarily see that post. However, if you tag their name to the post, they will definitely see it then. Tagging them, we're doing that for the purpose of, we want them to comment, we want them to like our posts, we want them to like our content, we want them to share our content. The more that people interact with our posts, liking and commenting, especially commenting when it comes to Facebook, Facebook will show that a little bit more. That post will show up as something that is getting high engagement. And Facebook likes that, the algorithm. So that's why we want to tag people because we do hope that they will interact with our posts. And then lastly, never post your Zoom meeting links publicly. 
because you don't want anyone to crash your meeting. There are people out there who have malicious intent. We don't want them to just be able to come in freely without registering first, come in freely and do something you know, malicious at our meeting. So that's why you don't just want to post your Zoom meeting link, post a registration link, or have it so that people need to contact someone at your club and they will send them the registration link. That's usually the VP of membership in most clubs. So what kind of content can you post to Facebook? There, it, there's a lot, infinite. Here are some examples though that I put some suggestions if you're struggling to try to figure out what to post. Of course, your upcoming meetings and events. Events meaning if you have an open house or you have a special guest speaker, you definitely want to get that out. Have a flyer or some type of image, a promotional image that you can create for that special event. Again, to help that post get more engagement. Meeting recaps. What happened at your last meeting? Give a little rundown. This person won for best speaker. This member won for best evaluator. We had three guests. Our, our district director showed up. Anything like that is good. And members love to see that type of meeting recap, especially if they could not make the meeting. They can see it there on Facebook. Public speaking or virtual tips, always good to post. They're helpful. A screenshot group party pick. If you're a club, if you have members who are okay with their faces being shown on Facebook, someone in a club can snap, snap a group photo. I look like I'm freezing here. Can you guys still hear me? We can, can hear you. Can you hear me okay? Okay. It's frozen on my end. I don't know why, but as long as you can hear me, take a screenshot, a group photo, and post that on Facebook. Show who is at your meeting. Individual member screenshots. If you have members who are okay with you taking a photo of them, you know, while they were being table topics master, you can do that. Old club photos. So a lot of our clubs in our district, they've been around a long time. You might have some photos from way back in the day. Think about posting some of those old photos. They're especially great for throwback Thursday. Let me try to turn my video off and turn it back on, see if that will work a little bit. Okay, great. Toastmaster of the night spotlight. And I'm gonna show you some examples on the next slide of what I'm talking about. If you have someone, who, someone who's gonna be the Toastmaster of the evening, why not give them a little shine? Post them on your Facebook page or Instagram page. You know, Osama's going to be Toastmaster of the night. Here's some fun facts about him. He was born such and such. His favorite flavor of ice cream is vanilla. His favorite color is blue. Little things like that. Hey, it's a big deal. This person is leading our meeting. Let's show them some love. Member Toastimonials. We like to call our testimonials, toastimonials. Put some of those up. We have people who are new to the club. Maybe they've been here a month or two. They're enthusiastic. Ask them why they joined. Ask them what have they learned so far. Get those testimonials. For our members who've been long time members, 10, 15, 20 years, why do they still remain in Toastmasters? Get their testimonials too and add them. That lets other people see that Toastmasters really is an organization that's for everybody. And the fact that people are in it for such longevity looks really good. Club history fun fact, what happened at your club on the, the fifth anniversary? Did you guys have a party or anything like that? Or did something historical happen on, on the day that your club charter? You can post something like that. Toastmasters history fun fact, doesn't have to be just your club. What is something from Toastmasters history? Like, I believe the other day was Ralph, Ralph Smedley's birthday. So it could be something like that you could post. Toastmasters word of the day. Any word of the day you want to throw up, you can do that. It doesn't have to be the actual word of the day used at your meeting. And public speaking memes are all over the web. They are hysterical. Just look them up. You can post them right to your pages. So let's look at a few examples. 
I looked at some Instagram and Facebook pages from a few clubs in our district. Some clubs are doing a fantastic job with their social media. So I really want to show them some love here. On the left, you see this flyer for Harlem Toastmasters. It's actually, it's one that they just put up, I think it was yesterday. And this is from their Instagram page. I follow Harlem Toastmasters on Instagram. That club is doing a bang up job on Instagram. They are all over it. They post, I think, every single day. And I like a lot of their content. So I put them here as a good example. Instagram, they are doing phenomenal. And then you see the hashtag I put under that, NYC Toastmasters. They always use that hashtag on Instagram. Sometimes they use it on Facebook, but always on Instagram. So think about that. Think about how many people in New York, and somebody might type in NYC Toastmasters, Harlem's content is going to always come up amongst any other clubs that are using that hashtag, but they are doing a wonderful job on Instagram. In the middle, we have Bryant Park Toastmasters. This is an example of giving the Toastmaster of the evening some love. As you can see here, introducing Bill Muscoff, our Toastmaster for Tuesday, January 25th. And then here's a photo of Bill. I don't know where he's speaking at, but that's him at the front here. So it's a personal photo that he gave the club to share. I didn't put the whole post because it would have been really long, but where you see, see more, there was a lot of other information about Bill there. It's a really good post. Check out Brian Park Toastmasters. They have a good Facebook page. And then on this side, I have New York Toastmasters. They have another good active Facebook page here. They posted their winners of the week a few days ago. I like this image that they created. They have the Toastmasters logo, the date. It's very snazzy here. So this is just a good example. And they posted their winners here. So giving people some love. And here we have on the left, the 30th anniversary. This is actually a video, but I could not, there wasn't a way for me to download it and embed it here. So I just took a screenshot. This is for Hudson River Toastmasters. This club had their anniversary, as you can see, they posted this February 13th. This video is fantastic. I urge you to go to their page, check it out on Facebook. I don't know who created that video, but it looks amazing. Good quality. This is Stella. It's me. I'm sorry? Yeah, this is Stella. That was me that created the video from Hudson River Toast. Oh, congratulations, Stella. The video is great. This club is very active on Facebook, so they have a good page overall. I commend them. In the middle, this is my club, MI Toastmasters. So this is an example of a funny meme that you might want to post. As you can see, our girl Judge Judy here, um, is not an answer. There are a lot of memes that you can use. Just search the web, do a Google search. And then on the right, we have Columbia University Toastmasters posting about their contest coming up. I grabbed this image today. So the, the contest, it either, it probably is, let me see, February 26th. Okay. Yep, tomorrow. So if you guys want to go, it's tomorrow. <laughs> But they are posting about their event. So that's why I just put this as an example here. Okay. 